Ooh, it's so cold outside. It was a sunny and beautiful day in Bergen, the day Bendik and I finished our three week long tour of the west coast. Alright, leaving one car <laughs> and getting another one. So one thing you should know about Bergen is that all of these tiny tiny streets usually lead somewhere. We were really tired, but we tried to celebrate by going to our favorite cafe. Days like this, when it's this beautiful here, I miss Bergen so much. This really beautiful spring would, however, prove to be a big contrast to the place where we were going. Hello, you guys! It's been a minute. We uh, have been here. <laughs> We've been here in uh, Bendik's parents' house. <laughs> We've been here in Bendix's parents' house like uh, for almost a week now and we've basically spent the whole week preparing for the next tour. And now we're going to Northern Norway tomorrow and I'm super excited for that. But it's a lot of things to prepare today so we're also a little bit stressed to be honest. Also I have to say that packing is like one of my least favorite things in the world. So usually we have a full car of equipment when we do this. So we're kind of curious how we're going to fit everything in the bags. But uh, let's see if we can have the buckets in there. <laughs> I think it's gonna work. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> So if you're completely new here and none of this is making any yep. sense to you, that's, then I just wanted to explain shortly. My name is Maria and I usually spend my time in a little house in the countryside of Norway together with my partner Bendik. But this spring, ever since April, we have been traveling around Norway with a plant workshop. Going to different schools all over the country and teaching the kids about wild plants and their many uses. Normally I don't share that much from our workshops because I value the privacy of the school kids. But what I do share is the places we go to, which are sometimes very much off the beaten track and maybe not the typical place that people would go to in Norway. And that also makes it even more fun. There are definitely some ups and downs, but for the most part not having an expectation of what to find is the best part of the journey. Welcome to 
Not bad. Are you ready to go from the airport <laughs> into unknown territory? So here you can see there's a sport mode and there's a snow mode. <laughs> so that says something that we're in. In the Northern north. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we will need it. Who knows? Hopefully not. not. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. The first place we were headed for on this short but very intense tour of Northern Norway is a place called Borkenes, which is pretty close to a city that is called Harstad in Troms of Finnmark County. It's pretty far north and it was definitely not the same type of spring that we'd had in Bergen. I just feel like I'm so over the snow now. <laughs> um, I imagine the people that live here are too. Also, it's actually nine o'clock now, but we both feel like it's about seven because it's brighter up here in the north. Whenever Bendik and I visit a school with our plant workshop, we always have to check out the area beforehand to see what plants are growing and create like a route around the school that we will be walking. And that's why we had to go to the school this evening, even though it was getting pretty late. There's always dandelion. Time to go to the hotel. I think it's like 10 o'clock now. Whew. But we actually found a lot of plants here. Like almost, or actually more than we have found some places on the west coast. So that's good. We're ready for tomorrow. Yeah, it's a bigger. So we made it to our hotel room, and, but it's like 11 o'clock and it's a Sunday and so nothing's open here in Harsta. So we bought some snacks down in the lobby and that's kind of our dinner. dinner. <laughs> Just look forward to breakfast tomorrow instead. This is pretty late and we'll be going pretty early tomorrow. So I guess I'll see you then. How do you feel about today? Good. Good? <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. I felt so relieved to be done with this first day because it went really well and for some reason I had been a bit nervous about this tour. I think it was something about teaching about plants and nature in a nature that is sort of foreign to me, that felt a little bit unnerving. I knew that most of the same plants would be growing in this area. And I felt like I could finally drop my shoulders a little bit and enjoy the rest of the day and the rest of the tour. We always look so stupid when we go with these buckets and stuff <laughs> in the hotel. <laughs> so we have to like dry all the towels from uh, from the workshop, and it's not the easiest thing to find places to hang them in this uh, hotel room. Hi. 
After we finished organizing the towels and the equipment, we went out to this Cuban Norwegian coffee shop that had really good coffee and beautiful carpets on the wall. Other than that, we didn't get to see that much of Harsta that day, but one place worth mentioning is also this thrift shop where you could actually sit down, listen to music and have a cup of coffee while looking through all the things. <laughs> We bought some lunch because we just want to explore, so we don't want to spend too much time sitting down. We're headed for that little tip there, and you can see that there is. Uh, Nothing in sight because of the weather, but it's still gonna be fun, I think. Hi. Oh, oops. <laughs> and then Nick is just eating his lunch, <laughs> and we're kind of like waiting for maybe the rain will stop, but I'm guessing. I'm guessing not. So probably not. Probably not. But so we're going to go outside here. It looks so so beautiful. I think I maybe see an eagle over there. Maybe two eagles. We're not too sure where they are. Oh, it's so cold outside. I'm so cold and so wet now, but it was worth it. <laughs> now we're going to drive back to Harsta and get some dinner actually. But it's beautiful here, just like super beautiful. Elksnes was worth the trip. So do you guys like my new jacket by the way? I bought it in the thrift shop here. past nine so but it's still super bright outside so it gets me really confused actually because this is how it is in the summer where we live like in July and stuff but here it's in May so it feels like summer and then at the same time 
there's snow and it's cold. <laughs> it's confusing. And we're just taking a walk. Soon we have to head home to the hotel because we are leaving for Kautokaino at 8 o'clock tomorrow. The, the flight is at 8 o'clock, so we have to leave pretty early from our hotel. Bendix here. <laughs> So actually it's kind of funny because it's such a big difference between this place and Kautokaino in distance uh, but it's still in the same region so that's why we kind of have both these schools but they're really far apart. Finnmark where Kautokaino is is like the furthest north you can get in Norway so it's gonna be very different up there but it's so crazy to be in this place one day and then in Finnmark and like Kautokaino, the other. And then yesterday we were in Oslo, so that's kind of weird. And uh, usually the reason why Norwegians don't really travel that much up here is not because we don't want to go here, but it's actually because it's very expensive with the flights and stuff. So it's definitely a privilege to be able to go to both these places in one week with plane. <laughs> it's a lot cheaper to go to Spain or it's cheaper. Or... It's cheaper to go to Spain oh. than to go to the north in Norway. Not cheaper. Oh. Oh. Mm. 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 Six in the morning. And we have to go to the airport. I'm so tired. <laughs> it's very bright though, as usual. We have reached the airport and now we just have to uh, deliver the car and check in and then hopefully there is some sort of restaurant on the inside because um, we haven't eaten breakfast. What are we doing today? Huh? Changing a plane. So we left the tall and pointy mountains of Harsta and the Troms County, and we found ourselves suddenly surrounded by the flat and wavy landscape of Finnmarks Vidda. Let's go to Kautokaino. Yep. Yep, yep. Finnmarksvidda, which would in English be the Finnmark Plain, is Norway's biggest highland stretching out over 22,000 square kilometers, with some parts being in Finland and some parts being in Norway. This area is now the heart of the reindeer husbandry in Norway, and also a very important area for the northern Sami culture and Sami people. Driving through this landscape, I felt this feeling of freedom because you can see so far and it just feels like you can walk forever through that landscape. But I also felt a little bit scared because it also feels really wild and I felt very small. 
But just as we thought we had really reached the middle of nowhere, this little place appeared along the road. Stopped halfway on to Kautukaino, on the mountain here, and uh, there's a little cafe here. So. Mm. so they have like a lot of different jams that you get served with the waffle, and they make all of them here. <laughs> so we're trying like everyone. <laughs> There was really nothing but this huge highland landscape around this little house and it was so quiet there. Which was really good because my soul was pretty weary from all the traveling and I just needed a little moment to take a breath. So we just had a very weird experience because we saw something in front of us and then we realized that it was like a, it was a car that had hit a reindeer and we stopped to check if the driver and the reindeer how it was going and, and uh, luckily the reindeer was completely dead. The driver was still just okay and, and was like kind of horrific it was like blood everywhere so kind of feel like I'm a little bit in shock still it's like but I feel very sorry for both the reindeer and the driver because the driver was also really upset about it and uh, yeah but luckily the driver was not hurt yeah yeah, we are soon there, so we look forward to just reaching our destination. We've been traveling since 8 o'clock this morning and now it's about 3, so... Kautukaino or Guavdagjaidno, which is where we were going, is where a number of important institutions like the Sami College, the Sami High School and also a reindeer husbandry school are situated. It is also one of the municipalities in Norway where most people speak a Sami language, mainly the northern Sami language. So we just checked on the school here in Kautukaino and I would say that this is the first time since we started this tour that people have told us, like the teachers have told us, there isn't that much growing and it has actually been true because in this place it's actually true. Right now, because the snow is barely melted and there's not that much growing here. But that's fine, because we can talk about trees and stuff, so we have a plan. This is basically the state of, <laughs> of the plants right now. So we have been traveling for like a full day, but we have uh, one thing that we really want to do today when we're here. And we kind of have to just go there immediately because they are closing in a few hours. So now Bendik has fetched us some food and we will see. This place is absolutely crazy. It's so, so beautiful here. and. I'm gonna show you, but look, they actually have, this building is built with the birds in here. So you can see <laughs> the hens and everything. And they built it so that they could be kind of part of the building. <laughs> and there's so much art here and they sell this silversmithing, so you can also see the people that make the jewelry and they are sitting in, in the entrance area and working. It's crazy. <laughs> ser crazy ut när man ser på den vinkeln här med alla formerna och färgerna och allt. 
This place is called the Jules Silver Gallery and was made by a man named Frank Jules and his wife Regine. They both came to Kaito Kaino in the 1950s because they were interested in the Sami culture and nomadic cultures. Eventually they created a silversmithing business there because the Sami people were in need of silversmiths. Nomadic cultures often carry silver or other jewelry. That is a good way of saving wealth on your body, which is still easy to carry with you when you are traveling. This is the thumb of the man who built this place. And this is his wife's artwork that she's still working on the bone. They also went to Afghanistan and also did like a lot of volunteer work there during the Soviet-Afghan war. And um, this room in general I think is more like a combination of different nomadic cultures and, and items from different nomadic cultures and also Sami culture. So you can see the roof here. That's kind of a, inspired by the Sami culture. And then, yeah, there's a lot of other things here from everywhere. How was your experience, Bendik? It's a uh, fairy tale. Yeah, that's a good word. <laughs> so we have checked into our hotel and we also want to explore a bit more, but we are starving now. What did you order? Kebab. With? Mm. I am so hungry now. And a bit tired from this day, to be honest. It's been a long travel day. Sometimes it's a bit hard to like adjust, I think. We kind of fell into like this hole after we ate because it was like the drone battery was flat, the camera battery was flat, uh, my phone was dead, and then we also had like flat batteries in a way, so we fell asleep a little bit. But now we are driving on just like a random road just to explore the landscape and yeah it's kind of the road apparently that leads towards uh, the Finnish border and it's just this endless endless landscape here. And also many people here speak Sami language so it's also kind of cool to just like hear, hear the language up front because we don't really hear it that much in the south even though there are a lot of Sami people in the south but here everyone speaks it and it's like yeah kind of cool to hear for those who don't know Norway has done so much injustice to the Sami people in the past and still in some ways continue to do that by building out some of the areas where the reindeers are. And one of these things they did that still have so much impact to this day is that they sort of tried to make the Sami people Norwegian by taking away their right to speak their language in many cases and also forcing their children to boarding schools where they were supposed to just speak Norwegian. As a result of this, many of the Sami languages are almost extinct in Norway these days. And that was why it was really nice to hear the northern Sami language being so alive in Kautokaino. It's not so easy to go for walks here these days. But maybe soon. Gosh. And Bendik didn't want to go all the way. <laughs> What do I do to make these drone shots? You should all be grateful. Oof. Finally some sun! I wonder if it will last all night. <laughs> it's 
so I guess maybe we will see you tomorrow for our journey home. Nej, det er sånn at man gjør ikke det. It was such an adventure in the north, but after being on the road for over a month, I was so eager to get home to my little house in the countryside. And the journey was so long with so many changing flights and changing different transportation. We've been to six different airports during the last three days. So when we finally got home, I was kind of exhausted. But so grateful that this place is my landing space. This was not the end of our travels, but it's definitely the end of this video. See you in the next one.